So in terms of doing tarot readings, I did mention the Tom Benjamin video that I found helpful. And the other thing I found helpful was this book by Vincent Petitchi called Stray Tarot, How to Survive as a Tarot Reader. And I promised you guys that I was going to read this last time and give you a quick summary of it. And I've done that. Um, and so I will, I will give you a quick review right now. Um, so this book is, again, it's practical advice for doing professional tarot readings. And it goes into a lot of the minutia, like how to set up your tent at a fair, um, how to position your table, how much decor to have, um, how to talk to people. So, you know, not all of the details are necessarily going to be relevant to every reader. You might have a different style or a different take on how you want to set yourself up to do um, readings. But um, I found it helpful in preparing to do these professional readings. Um, he does also give you tips for, for doing readings, like how uh, chapter 11 is reading the tarot fluently. Um, and he talks about some simple spreads, some more complicated spreads. He has his own um, technique for reading the Celtic cross spread, which I like better than the traditional Celtic cross. So he's got some stuff like that in here. He also has a chapter on why the tarot works. Um, and he talks about something called conceptual blending. And I can see his point in, in what he's getting at in this chapter. So, so that's interesting. Um, but going back to the first part with the sort of the mundane, like, you know, how to set up or, or how to get more clients. That's the other thing is that he spends a lot of time on in this book is, is how to get clients and then what kinds of questions clients ask. As you can imagine, being a tarot reader for over 30 years, he starts to see patterns in what um, in what people ask, what they're looking for in a tarot reading. So it's all good information. I will say that Vincent Petitchi also talks about a lot of this stuff on his YouTube channel. So you could um, kind of cobble it together by watching his videos that are about tarot reading. Um, I think he sort of repeats a lot of this there. But for $11, you know, it's certainly, um, I think, a worthwhile thing to pick up. And I think you can get an e-version. It's a self-published book through Amazon, but I think you can get an electronic version of this too. Um, I suppose I do have a couple of critiques, which is that his his writing style and his speaking style are the same, and it gets a little bit repetitive. Um, like he'll make a statement, and then two par paragraphs later, he'll just rephrase that same statement. So I feel like you know if he really wanted to publish a more in-depth book, he would need a, a heavy hand as, with an editor. Um, but it's not too bad for just a what's this book's like a hundred pages long. And the font's pretty big, so you know it's not it's not a dense tome, it's not an academic text, so you know I can sort of get over that. Um, the other thing that he really focuses on too, um, as I mentioned, he talks about developing a client base, and it seems to me that that's both helpful and a little bit problematic when you talk about trying to get repeat customers. Um, what are you really offering those people? He talks about people who come to him over the course of a year, you know, for a hundred readings over the course of the year. And that just kind of set up a red flag. It's like, ooh, that seems like codependent and kind of um, maybe not healthy. Like maybe they're using a tarot reader and would they really should be going to see a therapist or something like that. Um, so I don't know, but I get it that, you know, if you are doing this professionally full time for your income, you, you can't really rely on just one-off readings. You kind of need repeat customers to make sure that you have a steady income. So again, I can sort of cut him some slack, but at the same time, I don't think that developing um, repeat customer base is really what I would want. I like doing these one-off occasional readings um, uh, because that, that keeps it fun too, fun and light. And you don't have people constantly calling you you know, at all times of day saying, oh, I'm having, you know, I'm having a crisis. I need a reading right now. Um, so that's, I think that's where I'm at too. It kind of made me realize what I do and don't want as, as a professional reader, or as I'm dipping my toe into that sphere, I wouldn't necessarily call myself like a full-time professional reader right now. Um, yeah, I, Michelle says she has a lot of respect for Vincent Petitchi and I, and I do too. I just, Reading his um, explanation and his advice made me realize some things that I do and don't want for myself. I guess that's where I'm going with all this. Yeah, and you know, 100 readings, I mean, that was his top client, right? So it's not like everybody's getting 100 readings, but you know, other ones had 60 or 40 or 20, 
I would, I would think the most I'd want to talk to the same person in any given time period might be once a month. Um, I just wouldn't want to have to work with people that are that needy. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm sure he's giving them good advice and, um, you know, maybe they're getting a lot out of it. Um, Vincent does also talk in this book about, you know, people will come in cycles. So they'll like have a crisis or they'll be going through some big change in their life, not necessarily a crisis, but, oh, I'm like getting a new job and moving to a new city. Um, and they'll come for a series of readings, maybe over the course of a few weeks. And then once they sort of settle into whatever the new thing is, then they sort of, you know, they go away for a while until they, until something else comes up in their life and, and then they come back to you. So that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Um, but yeah, it was just interesting because um, he brought up a lot of things I hadn't considered. So yeah, so good book. Um, and then he's got some other books that are more about, you know, card meanings and that kind of stuff. So, um, but this is the one that's really about being a reader. Um, again, if any of you have um, resources about doing doing readings or being a professional tarot reader um, that you want to share, feel free to leave those in the comments below this video. I would love to learn more because I think there's a lot of good experienced people out there that are writing about it. Uh, Michelle saying, uh, on a lighthearted note, when I came across him on YouTube, I had a secret crush. Uh, and he could sell ice to an Eskimo. Yeah, um, I know what you mean. He's a very compelling, uh, Vincent Petitti is a very like, cons compelling um, uh, personality and not in a, not in like a slimy way. He's just, he's like got this gravitas about him and you're like, oh, this is interesting. What, what is this person saying? And so you feel like drawn into him. I can see, I can see why people want to go back to him. You know, if he was your tarot reader, why you'd want to go back to him and get more advice and stuff. He even talks in his book about how, you know, 80 or 90 percent of reading tarot is using common sense and only 10 percent or so is intuition. So that was that was very good. Um.